What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Whoa. Well, it's over. The Mets season is going to crumble. They're not going to make the playoffs. They have like 50 games against the Astros. The Braves just keep winning. And Max Scherzer is just never coming back. It, it really feels like Jacob DeGrom last year. Frank, and um, DeGrom, well, he just keeps getting pushed back and back and back. He's not coming back. And pretty soon, the, the Mets starting rotation is going to be Carlos Carrasco. Let's get to check swing now. Okay, I'm going to throw up five inches. Oh, there it goes. Hey, dang, Danish cookies. That's the Danish cookies. Hey, Carlos Carrasco. Five, four runs in the first inning is fun. No champ, no shot to win. Carlos Carrasco is going to go 0-9, oh, 0-18 oh, the rest of the season. And he's going to be going like this. Go. Then he goes, cookie kernel, the cookie kernel, Danish cookies. Taiwan Walker is going to be Taiwan Escobar. Eichhoff, you watch. Eichhoff is going to get, Taiwan Walker is going to get lit up like a fucking July tonight. Frank, did you have a monster today? You're, you're, you're. Oh my God! Yeah, first pitch after baseball the rest of the season. And Scherzer, sure, sure. another rehab, another rehab. Push back, push back, push back. Jacob Degrom's coming back soon. Coming back soon. Coming back soon. Ah, oh, never mind. He was out the whole season. He needed to rest the whole season. He needs surgery. And the next year, the brace. Fully healthy. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And the Max Scherzer is still out. And they're not trying. The starting rotation next year is going to be Zabucky, uh Carlos Carrasco, and it, who's going to go 0 and 29. It's going to be uh, uh, the, the Jared Eichel, Corey Oswald, and, uh, and uh, 0 and 162. As the Mets give up 10 runs out of the first inning, play every game against the Astros. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there, Frank. Um, I think. That's, uh, the new hero. Ender Enciarte. Ender. And Ender Enciarte has gone O for a thousand. Ender. Ender and Ender and Escobar. Rally killers. Escobar says that nothing is better. Busting rallies makes him feel good. Easy out, Escobar. And James McCant. James McCant. And James McCann has hit into 89 double plays, and there's 89 pass balls, and the Mets continue to fall. It's feeble again. It's fucking feeble again. This what, like they, they, have looked, they have looked like 2021. Which stretch of games are you talking about, though? Beyond the 0-3 to the Astros and, and probably 0-4 today, good shot with AL Cy Young candidate Justin Verlander pitching. What other stretch are you are you talking about specifically with the Mets? Because they were 24 against the uh, Marlins, where basically if the Marlins didn't uh, didn't kick the ball around and uh, on Friday night, they would have lost. They probably would have lost on Saturday to with the Marlins actually cared about hustling. They should have they should have been swept by the Marlins. The Marlins outplayed them. So right now, I wouldn't say outplayed, but right now in the past week or so, the runners in scoring position hits have not been there like they have in the previous the Mets, runners in scoring position, the rest of the season is going to be, oh, 50. It's back. It's back. Lunge, lift, lunge, lunge. Lift, lunge, lunge. And pretty soon, I bet you a Donnie Stevenson video is going to come out. I hear you, Frank, but Jeff McNeil, he just came back last night. He's their best hitter with runners, runners in scoring position. He, he's batting over four, 400 in those situations this year, and which well, is among the league best. Uh, every, every time the Mets have runners in scoring position, it's, it's Escobar. Escobar. I love striking out. He's in it. It's like the, the escape hatch lineup. Escobar has sucked. He is, he, when's the last time he got a hit? He's he's really struggling. He's about four. He's four for his last thirty-eight, and he's taking a seat to Guillaume today, and that'll probably become a regular thing if if and uh, he's in a slump. Just keeps up. Who Guillaume? Uh, Guillaume. He's I, like go for his last twenty. 
I don't think he's in a slump, but he's he's not as hot as he was. That's that's definitely for sure. Um, Everyone's in a slump. Mark Hanna's in a slump. Yeah. And now they're putting Ender, Ender Inciate. Do you know Ender Inciate in the Syracuse? Had, uh, he played in Syracuse. He uh, went 0 for 29. 27 strikeouts. And he dropped eight fly balls. Oh he, that's why he's got the E in his name. E for error. And he's the rally ender. In fact, he has this thing. He has a slash on his shirt. He is rally ender. That's his name. They need to reevaluate some of these lineups, though, especially with the way they're struggling. I mean, yes, they they were missing McNeil for five games, all five games on the road trip. That had something to do with their struggles with runners in scoring position. Um, but batting him eighth against a lefty with James McCann batting behind it, like it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. They got to stop doing that. It just it doesn't work. It doesn't work out. And and really and really, I know McCann McCann did really well with the pitching staff before he got hurt. But Thomas Nito better defensively and also a better hitter. And a better hitter with runners in scoring position. I mean, James. Yeah, the lineup they're putting out today is, is just non-competitive. They're gonna get. They, I, I, they're gonna get. They might get no hit. When you look at the bottom three in the order in the order today, it's it's looks like three automatic outs. You're right. You're right. You're right about that. They're facing Verlander. They're trying to get Dom, lefties in there, Dom, but Dom Smith. <laughs> Dom Smith. Just it's time. It's time to. It's time for him to go. They might as well have kept him in AAA because now bringing him back up and seeing the way, seeing him swing the bat in the same way, look, looking like nothing changed before he got sent down, that's that's just eliminated the minimal trade value that you he built. You know, he actually he actually says that Hugh Quattlebaum was the best hitting coach he ever had. I think there's just the Mets' weaknesses have really been highlighted in the past week or so. Um, they're about at least one bat away. I mean, DH and catcher have been two major holes offensively. Um, J.D. Davis is, was supposed to be a part-time player, not your everyday D.H. Um, Dom Smith even was supposed to be a part-time player, but the Mets were trying to see if Robinson Cano had anything left, which was clearly a mistake. Um, on top of that, they need to trade for a bat. Um, their pitching has really been yeah. terrible. Since, Scher- since Scherzer got hurt, their pitching stat, their starting rotation has been really bad. Um, they're going to have to acquire a starter no matter what happens with DeGrom or Scherzer who should be back soon but w- let's actually talk about that Frank because you're upset obviously you don't have faith based off recent history of the Mets luck it's it's shitty with these it, no 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 it, you know it's gonna happen so you look at Tyler McGill he came back took him about a month he came back he makes one start second start he he injures himself new injury so here the Mets the reason why the, this seems so weird with the timeline everything's getting pushed back you have bad feelings about it Scherzer and DeGrom, if they suffer a setback, it's o- it's over. Their hopes of contending this year are over. This is probably the best Mets team we've seen since late 2015 and 2006. Yeah, yeah what are they going to do? They're going to they barely eke into the third wild card and have to play three road games? If they don't have DeGrom and Scherzer, yeah, that's, that's what the season, probably the ceiling of the season. So that's why they have to be extremely, extremely delicate with these guys. Because th- they need to come back why and they need was, to stay why back. Why was Scherzer scratched yesterday? Scher- Scherzer never was not. Tell the truth. So, so you, what happened was Scherzer, and they didn't say it, but it was a bit of an indication. Scherzer has felt a little bit sore in between his start routines, between the bullpen, the rehab, and the core workouts he has to do to strengthen his oblique in addition to pitching. He is being extremely conscious to not suffer a setback. So he didn't want to go out there. He said, I need another day. So if he feels like he needs another day today, then he'd get pushed back again. But the, obviously that isn't the case. He's going to be starting tonight. Um, that's why he needed another rehab start. He thought at first he was going to be able to come back. Two days after his rehab start last week is when he felt soreness because he did his bullpen after his start. He did his rehab and he did a core workout. And that's when he said, hey, I'm going to have to be perfect on Sunday. And like, I just not worth suffering a setback. We have 80, what, 87 games left, 88 games left. They need Max Scherzer to be back when he comes back, whether it's a week, two weeks from now, whatever it is. They need him to come back and stay back the rest of the season and the postseason if they're going to go anywhere this year. That's that's just the reality of the situation. DeGrom, same goes for DeGrom. I just, I just, I just have a bad feeling it's all falling apart. There's reason to have anxiety about it because we don't know. Even if they follow all the precautious steps, they could still come back and, and re-injure themselves or get a new injury. Like – 
I mean, there's always I mean, that it, there. It, it just, it just, it, it, it's forever cursed. It, it remains to be seen. I mean, what the Mets do at the trade deadline, it's going to be determined whether DeGrom and Scherzer come back. They're still going to need to trade for a starter to cover themselves because I don't think they're going to get a top starter, but if one of them suffers a setback and gets hurt, you need to seriously consider it. But by that point, then you're not even, most likely not going anywhere anyway this year, even though they do have a good, they have a playoff team. This is a playoff team at, at, in the very least. I mean, the Braves have, Braves have the best record in the yeah, league. But this what free it's, it's, it's a one-year window of opportunity. Well, with Steve Cohen, the thing is, it's not a one-year opportunity. It is a win-now team. They do have some aging people, some pending free agents. The Mets have money to spend, though. They, they're not going to be financially in a stranglehold. They're not going to re-sign everybody, but they're not going to be restricted, you know? Um, at the same time, they're trying to develop, but whatever. I mean, Alvarez has been tearing the cover off the ball. Maybe he comes up later in the season as a hitter if they need him. The way I'm looking at it right now is the Mets, if they want to transform their offense, because look at the Braves. Look at the Braves, the Dodgers. They stack their offenses to cover themselves through slumps because these slumps happen throughout a season. They cover themselves. They don't have these holes. Well, the, Mets, the Mets are not covered. They never do. They the, always forget something. The Mets essentially, and you see like a situation of last night where they fall behind 4 nothing, 3 nothing, 4 nothing, 5 nothing. They have had the comebacks earlier in the season. It's been a while since we've seen that. Um, at the same time, it's so much harder to come back from those deficits when you have one home run hitter in your lineup. Basically, right now, the Mets, the Mets basically, right now, if they fall behind, game over! And, 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 and. The Mets haven't had a comeback. In, uh, the, in, in, the, the Yankees are 24 and 20 in games and they trailed. The Mets have lost their last 19 games in which they trailed, even one nothing. So as, as soon as they fall behind, game over! Ding, ding, ding! Um... On the other hand, too, I mean, 2021. It feels like 2021 more and more every day. I again, I understand the anxiety. It's still a winning month in June, but the team hasn't the team hasn't played well, particularly well the last two weeks. We'll call it. Um, their holes are starting to show. DH catcher, uh, starting rotation. The bullpen is shaky at Here's times, but prediction. it's fine. Here's a prediction. Yeah, the Mets are going to get swept in Cincinnati. What would that do to your I outlook? It, I think I think it's it, I, I think the Mets are going to probably end up. Uh, uh, the, the, I think the Mets are going to end up finishing the year uh, seventy-eight and eighty-four. They haven't been losing to bad teams. It, though, Frank. It, 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 it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be crash and burn. Frank, they they haven't been losing to bad teams. They've been beating good teams this year, yeah. and now the Astros the Astros look like they're above their weight class, and it tells you what the what the Yankees are going to do to them next month if Scherzer and Degrom aren't back. Um, on the other hand, on the other hand, this is the last meeting they have with Houston. And you think back in 2015, the Mets were 0-7 against the Cubs that year. They just got swept in their season series by the Pirates. They lost most of their meetings to the Nationals until the very end of the season when they went 6-0 against them. Like, things can change. It just really depends. They built this team around DeGrom and Scherzer being their top two. They've overachieved and been... 20 games over 500 the season without those guys, basically, virtually without Scherzer and, and without DeGrom the whole way. Now it's showing up that they need those guys, obviously, as you'd expect, and they need them to come back in the in July, and that's what they're hoping. But, um, yeah, I, there, there should I, be some worry I, that, I that something happens. I predict that won't see Scherzer before, uh, before September. If he suffers a setback, that's going to happen. So that's another reason why they need to be careful. So it's, this, it's just a nightmare just never ends at, at this point. I mean, you were trashing Taiwan Walker. He's been their best starter. He's been their best starter and David Peterson and, and really uh, Trevor Williams. Yeah, at times, but what but happens it, to him after this is this is just the right time. The, 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 the moment that it went south, he became Taiwan Eikhoff. Um, I wouldn't say now it was the second half last year. He was an all star in the first half. Um, but at the same time, Frank, he hadn't he threw 159 innings last year. He hadn't thrown more than 57 innings in a season in four years last year. So like that was part of it. And also giving up the home runs, which he hasn't done this year, even less so than his very good stretch last year. He's only given up three home runs this year. So 
He's been I just, he's been I a just, I just I just sense disaster. I I, I think they're going to get swept by the Rangers. They're going to go have an own five home stand, and then they'll go to uh, Cincinnati and they'll probably uh, get swept here too. I I I it's a ten twenty game losing streak. But the the Frank the the and thing I, is and I saw it in Miami. The, th- the thing is, they still won two out of three in Miami. They won three out of four against Miami the week before. Even if, I mean, they were playing pretty well in that series besides the last home stand, whatever. Um, what makes you think that they're going to lose to these bad teams that they've been beating even when they're not playing well? Because it's clear that they're above the weight class of, because, of those bad teams. It's not 2021. Because they just, Frank, because 2021 they just, was... back to feeble. 20, 2021... And that's a stretch. That's We're going to have those stretches during the season. This is probably the worst stretch they've played this season. Last year, though, the ceiling was 10 games over 500, and they were never above that mark. They were never above 10 games over 500, which is mediocre. It was just good for the Mets as of as in the last decade or so. It's, it was high standards for the Mets. 10 games over 500, mostly hovered around seven, eight games. Like They weren't talented enough. They weren't good enough. And guys were playing above their heads, but they, they had Jacob Brown. They they had Jacob Degrom, and once Degrom got hurt, and once they lost Lindor, even though he was struggling but starting to come around, they had no shot at competing, and people didn't realize that. So this year it's just it's totally different. But right now their their pitching staff is struggling, and and their offense has you know clear holes. Like there there needs to be upgrades made, of course. But but again, they they need their top two aces back, like they just do. So. When I you mean, look they, 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 the runners in scoring position, it's like last year again. I mean, what are they like? The last four games, they're like, uh, they're like, like seven for uh, sixty. They entered yesterday with the second highest batting average of runners in scoring position this year, even though they've struggled recently. They're like five for thirty-six since uh, I guess since Friday, so it hasn't been good. That can change though, and also it's, Jeff Mc, Jeff McNeil Jeff McNeil came back in one game yesterday, and he had no chances of running the scoring position yesterday because he was hitting in front of James McCann at the bottom of the order. Like you need Jeff McNeil to to bat fifth. He needs to bat behind Lindor and Alonso, who are your guys who drive in the runs when the table setters get on in in Nimmo and Marte. That the most important are the RBI hitters. Then Lindor, Alonso, McNeil. That's what your lineup needs to be. Canna who's also, you know, struggling right now. And, and, and he's not playing enough either. But um, Escobar needs to – Escobar's going to lose playing time because he's just – the power's not there. He was supposed to be their power bat. <clears throat> he's struggled extremely. He's hit lefties well, which is why he was in the lineup last night, Buck said. It's true. He's, he's hit 282 off lefties. It's righties he can't hit as a switch hitter. So he's not playing today. Guillaume, you know, he'll get, his, he'll get his chance. But Escobar, I mean, has just been a major disappointment. As good of a clubhouse guy as he is, great guy, great personality – leader whatever he's he's really having a tough time this year it doesn't make sense how the power numbers aren't there and that how he could struggle so much when the rest of the team has really performed well the rest of the lineup has has performed well this year beyond the catcher's position and, and dh and i predict that uh ender and crt is going to be this year's cameron maven he's going to he's not going to get a hit well frank good news i talked to travis jankowski yesterday in the clubhouse he's doing baseball activities uh he still needs to ramp up but as long as his finger responds well to the ramp up in the next week or so, he's going to start a rehab assignment, probably return second week of July. So we might not be seeing NCR for too much longer because Janko obviously has a good role on this team. And, uh, you know, they, they like him a lot and, and he'll be back. If NCR doesn't cut it, then he'll be back in AAA once Janko gets back in two weeks. So I wouldn't necessarily panic about that right now. And at the same time, I mean, Nick Plummer got a very clutch hit and had two very good games for the Mets when he first came up around Memorial Day. But uh, you know, he he had to go back down to AAA. He just he probably hasn't got. I don't think he's gonna hit since uh, that national series. So, um, do you know how bad Syracuse is? Do you know how bad Syracuse is? They're extremely thin depth wise. I know that. <clears throat> no. Alvarez is gonna be in Syracuse dope. soon. Give it a couple of weeks. Alvarez will be in Syracuse, I think. It's going to be another year of, of disappointment in the second half and fading away. <sighs> when you look at when you look Miracles. at things, when you look at things of how they are right now, though, last year it was I mean, they were getting injured. They had injuries last year, but they you know, their star players were still healthy. The star players got hurt after the all-star break and that was it. Like now these star players are coming back. I mean, the pitchers at least are coming back. 
that it's better if it, if if it turns out this way. And I, there's a long way to go. We don't know uncertainty, but if it plays out the way that these guys Scherzer and Degrom were hurt in the first half and they come back and they stay on the mound in the second half and there for the playoffs, whatever, then then everyone's going to be happy. That that's really all you could ask for if if you knew you had to deal with injuries with them this year, which which they they should have anticipated given the age and the history with Degrom recently and and Scherzer's age, obviously, like. Those were risks there. They took risks. And and what's disappointing is Bassett hasn't pitched well enough since Scherzer got hurt. And Carrasco, his last – Carrasco was really good this year. And then his last four starts, he's given up five runs in three out of four starts. Uh, I am sick of Carlos Carrasco. But I don't get sick of hot dogs. I'm first an original hot dog company. Yes, I'm talking about Charles Feltman, who invented the hot dog. And now Feltman's is a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And they did so in honor of their brother Jimmy, who was killed in 9-11. We are veterans that have collectively served over 110 months. Feltman is now one of the fastest natural food companies in the United States. They're 100% beef all natural purchased online and at WholeFoods.com. I keep saying Whole Foods on that. I meant to say uh, Feltman's at US and at Whole Foods. I, I see when I say online, I always think of that. But Whole not Foods. to mention they ship super fast, <laughs> and it will be the perfect addition to your family's next cookout. So remember to use promo code Frank to receive ten percent off all Feltman's products at Feltman's at US. That includes the bratwurst, the bacon, and the hot dogs. That's promo code uh, Frank for ten percent off. All Feltman's products at Feltman's.us. And remember, allow me to be frank, is presented to you by Feltman's. I at least could cook hot dogs on the grill. Maybe I'll try to do one of the brats on the, the grill sometime this year. Ribs, not so much. Not so much, yeah. Speaking of cookouts, Frank, do uh, you like charred, charred uh, ribs these days? <sighs> you know, <laughs> you know I, I, I put it on the lowest setting. And my first mistake was I turned on all three burners. I should have put on one burner and then put it on like an indirect burner. That was one mistake I learned. Second mistake was I put the uh, the barbecue sauce on, which causes flare ups and basically the, the ribs just basically nuked. I mean, they look like uh, Uncle Olin and Aunt Peru. Why did you put the barbecue sauce on while it was still cooking? I didn't know that it was not a good idea to put it on. I thought that I could put it on and. <sighs> well, now that Frank, now that but you know, now that you know what you did wrong, or you at least suspect a couple of things you did wrong, why don't you try again, like soon, to try and. I'll try again. No, I'll try again sometime in July. And Doug's was just spectating. Doug's, Doug's and, had um, ribs before. Now, I, I plugged these in last night, overnight. These new earbuds I get, and now they've lost, uh, they've, they've, they've run out of juice. My God. Am I getting an echo? No, no echo. We're totally fine. No technical difficulties other than your weekly, bi-weekly new headphones. Are you getting things. a, why is this? And now my thing is, this series is like popping up over here. No, Frank, you're totally fine. Now I can't hear you at all. You can't hear me. Great. The fucking headphones. Do you have you backup back headphones? On? Do you have backup, backup headphones? What the fuck? All right. Well. And now I got fucking Siri over here driving me fucking nuts. Frank gets a new pair of headphones basically every week, it seems like, and none of them ever work. I'm not really sure where he gets them. Um... Of course, you know what he's going to work? And look at this fucking Siri. Go away, Siri! Frank, disconnect your headphones. That's why they don't work. Because they're Mets. Yeah, they're Mets AirPods he got. Probably at City Field. It shows you right now. Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me? What was that? You hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Frank. What's going on? All you're right, fuck, I can hear you now. Fuck, your headphones are dead. Yeah, I know. I plugged them in. What, what, they, what they gave me? They gave me like, uh, what, 30 minutes of juice? You know what you need? You need the basics because the basics don't fail. You just plug them in and they work. Yeah, but they're in my way. 
they're not in your way that much. Because these, Frank, you with technology, the, the wireless headphones just don't work. They don't. I, I mean, I mean, I, I just got these in the fucking uh, package yesterday. Well, so now you can't hear, or you can hear. I can hear you, but it's coming over the speaker. Is it like affecting the audio? No, you sound perfect. Um, no more headphones for you. No more exotic headphones. We're we're doing the basics. I don't want to buy another pair. Of, the wires did, did they get in the way? I had to hang them up. My desk is a mess. I ordered a a, a, a thing of drawers, and uh, and did, Amazon delivered it, but it got lost in the office. Of course it did. Meanwhile, I got a, a stack of shit on my desk this high, and I can't clean it. What do you have stacked up on your desk? Just everything barstool related, just shirts and junk and bobbleheads and everything else? Shirts and junks and bobbleheads, exactly. Yeah, I can picture it. I can definitely picture it. And I try to get it a, 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 a $20 plastic drawer set, order it to Amazon, and they said it was delivered and nobody sees it. Well, you know what you can rely on uh, if you order it online, of course. You know what that is. Yeah, the Manscaped. And, uh, you know, uh, summer is here. It's the 4th of July coming up a uh, the, the couple of days away, you know. Uh, and uh, you want to hit the beach. You want to make sure that when you take your shirt off, that your balls are smooth. Yes, you heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here to keep your beach ball. The smooth is the fruity and sand. You know, it's summer, you want to kill cold beers and barbecues, but not the vibes with your pubes sticking out of your swim trunks. That's why Manscaped has a performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the four million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for hot guy summer by going to Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping with the promo code tank. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof? From the shower to the lake, from your chest scruff, all the way down to your ball fro. The Lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer around. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code tank at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code tank at manscaped.com. Turn your package into the full package with Manscaped. It's great timing, uh, you know, for this great package in the summer and everything. We got 4th of July weekend already coming up. Frank, you got any good big plans hitting the beach? What are you going to be up to? I'm going on a road trip with uh, my godbrother, Abe. Uh, we're going to hit the four Hall of Fames. We're going to uh, go watch the Mets lose in Cincinnati. Uh, maybe watch the USFL championship game. Very disappointed at the generals shit to bed last week. Oh. But, of course, they're one of my teams, so of course they'll shit to bed. I'm cursed. Yeah. Worst thing you could have done uh, is become uh, a fan. They're going to go to Canton. Then we're going to go to Cincinnati. Then we're going to go up to Toronto. NHL Hall of Fame, hit Cooperstown, and maybe if we have time, go to uh, Springfield for the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame before coming back for Keith Hernandez's number retirement. Holy shit. Frank, that's all in the span of a week. When are you leaving? Oh, Saturday. Holy shit. How are you going to do all that in seven days? You're going to be exhausted. I've become, a, I've become accustomed to the road. Yeah, you, you really are a road dog now. And of course, you got the you got the new shirt too, uh, raw dog and on the road. Yes, very nice shirt. I like how it came out. Yeah, it's cool and it's really fitting. Of course, for you. you know I'm going to be stopping for some raw dogging places. You got some mapped out already for your trip. Uh, I'll start mapping them out in a couple of days. So that's that, that's the norm for you then. You uh, before you go on these road trips because you've done quite a few recently. Um, that's when you'll just you'll look at you know what are the popular hot dog places in the areas you're traveling to or maybe on the way yep yep i, I look up also uh things like uh these stupid articles that have like the 50 best hot dogs in the 50 states and i've tried many of them by now i found a place in alabama like that i found a place uh in delaware like that 
But I don't know if Delaware has anything that's good. They have nice beaches and uh, no sales tax. Really? There's there's a tax break. I, I think there's no sales tax in uh, in Delaware, and they and they do have some nice beaches, a lot of farms, but some good beaches too. And and the the tax I've never break. Never about beach in Delaware. I think sometime this uh, summer I also had to go down to Wildwood for the first time. Oh, you haven't been to Wildwood? Nope. Well, as someone who's been going to Wild, I've been to Wildwood all, many times. Um, we used to go when I was young. My mom, my very close family friends own a motel there and a um, condo complex. So we've been going there for a very long time. I've uh, been there many times. Uh, you'll like it, but it's a little trashy. They have a cool boardwalk and, and the beach though, Frank is like literally a half mile to, or a quarter of a mile to walk onto the beach. A lot of space, which is nice, but it's a, it's a long walk to and on and off the beach, which you might not like. Um, and I think I also want to like, uh, go down to Cape May. Oh yes. Yes. I was away. Yes. And, and the, the, the southernmost tip of New Jersey. Yeah, it's the last, literally the last exit of Jersey. Um, Cape May is awesome. Cape Cape May is 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 the cl- is classy beach over there. Great food places and and it's very upscale. Very nice beach, clean. Um, that's more quiet. Like uh, you might like that better. Um, but Wildwood's fun. I mean, you'd like the boardwalk. You and Abe, I know Abe likes like you and Abe like going to the boardwalk at least in Seaside. Um, I'm actually I'm going to Seaside. Uh, I think Saturday to Sunday I'm going to go to Seaside Park. Um, so that, that's where you went last year and you loved it. Uh, I remember it was your, your first time when they had the Barstool house, right? Yep. So, uh, my, so they're not doing that Barstool house this year, right? Down the shore? Uh, there's some shore house, but I don't think it's in Seaside this year. I think it's somewhere else. Yeah. I, that's what I was wondering. I was like, uh, I'm surprised they did Seaside last year. I, I can't say what they're doing this year. Maybe they are doing this, but, um, Really, the scene for like that house and everything, the live like party scene, is where you went. DJs, Belmar, Manasquan, uh, Point Pleasant, like th- those are where like everybody this age I group. Actually, I think the beach house might actually be in Belmar. It probably is. That's that's where everyone does rentals. Um, that's I had a rental house in Belmar last summer, and officially retired this summer from from doing the rental house. But it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, th- those are the yeah, spots. Yeah, I'd be- of course, you know, Barstool versus America is going on right now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so. We steal the show. You're freezing. <sighs> ah! <laughs> Frank, did you have any uh, energy drinks today or something? You were getting up and you were hopping up at the beginning of the show. I Usually that's no, a sign. No, not today. Nothing. No, so you had soda already today, didn't you? Yep. Well, that's what that's got. Ca- did you have? It was a caffeinated soda. What was it? Yeah. What'd you drink? Pepsi. Yeah, diet Pepsi. Yeah. So there you go. That's that's your energy. That's why you don't drink coffee because you get all you get your caffeine from the soda. But. It, you should, Frank. You definitely should go to uh, check out Wildwood though, and and Cape May. What if if you go down there? One of these days. One of these yeah. days. Hopefully what, this summer I'll be able to do that. What you don't, what you won't like though, what you won't like, it's all. Can you guess what the majority sports fan is ar- around there? Yeah, no, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yep. Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, Flyers, you name it. New York oh, that's sports. That's where my trout's from. Mike Trout is from there, yes. He's from, I want to say he's from Cherry Hill, but he's he's from that, around that area, yeah. It's all Philly people go there. Uh, um, and uh, what you call, uh, uh, the uh, impending um, hockey free agent is from that area. Um, Who's going to be one of the most sold after free agents in the NHL this year? Uh, John, I can't. Oh. No? Hockey. Say it again. Flames, uh, dynamic score. What's his name? Johnny Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau. Okay. Well, hey, I I think he would look good in uh, blue and red. What do you? What about you? I want him in red and black. 
<laughs> I don't I don't think so. I think that's where careers go to end, not not uh not flourish. These these days at least. I can't I can't speak for the history, obviously. Well, the devil, the devil need to do something this season. Sadly, I think the best he's gonna end up in orange and black. Flyers? You yep. think the you really think the fly you think they're gonna make a splash like that? What? You think they're really well, the going to make a splash like that? Hockey. The, hockey, the Flyers won the worst teams in hockey this year. Yeah, Eastern I know. South Jersey, San County. And uh, he'd be a perfect fit for them. Yeah, it just depends on what they're willing to dish out. Whoever offers the most money is most likely where he's going to go. It's a bidding war. I mean, this guy's a top five scorer. He's, he's spent his entire career in Calgary. And I don't know if the Flames are going to be able to keep him. I think he wants to come play... Uh, Closer to home now. Well, he'll Frank, he'll get a record-setting contract, so it's whoever can pay him that money is where he's going to go. Meanwhile, well, the, uh, devil's, uh, the, devil, uh, the devil's just given the money that uh, P.K. Subban was making. They could have, yeah. You could say the same case with the Mets and Robinson Cano with uh, a number of, a number of uh, other players, Kyle Schwarber and other people. Yeah, meanwhile, the Mets season goes down to hell. Hill, I, I bet you they're going to be down three to nothing before the first set, before we're done broadcasting, recording. This game, How yeah, about the, the uh, Kyrie situation. How about the Kyrie situation? Um, yeah, that's what I really wanted to ask you about. How are, how are you feeling about that? Well, apparently he's staying, although Brian Windhorst today said that the Mets would be smart to just cut their losses and rebuild and uh, trade uh, Russell Westbrook to the Lakers. You mean Kyrie to the Lakers? Yeah. Yeah, no, he would love he would love this. He would love to see that for his boyfriend, LeBron. He says that it will be he says it'll be best for the league and everybody. I mean, can, can someone get that man off the off the air? All he is 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 LeBron James' voice voice box. Yeah, he really is. He really is. He he's in, he is in love. He has professed his love to LeBron James uh, many many many. Well, you know, times. you know, you know, you know, uh, you know what his favorite Christmas carol is, don't you? <clears throat> what is it? Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Akron. I, I mean, I mean, Brian Windhorst, LeBron James. It, it, it's it's almost it's almost like 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 he, like it's not even like he he like likes LeBron James. He worships LeBron James like he's like 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 God. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, Frank, with the uh, with the Mets game approaching here, um, we got a couple more things to get to and, and ask the tank, of course. But uh, I wanted to ask you about Barstool but the, Idol. The thing with the Nets, you know, if, if the Nets sort of lost, Kyrie Irving got nothing for him. And, and here's here's what I think happened. He put out the six. He wanted to leave. He put out six teams. Five of the six teams basically went. Be gone, Satan! Stay back! Stay back! Don't come near our team! Don't... In fact, my... came up smack. Don't you put our team in your... Oh, my God. Frank Frank just continuing to freeze right now. I don't know what's going on with the Wi-Fi. Frank... Damn it! (laughs) We're in a company with our internet! Frank, yeah, how do you not have Wi-Fi in the Barstool office? No, the Wi-Fi is just spotty. It, it comes and goes. How is that possible at a media company? Pete. That's who, how it's possible. That's Pete's fault? Yep. Which apparently Dave doesn't have Wi-Fi at his place in Miami either. Or at least has <laughs> shitty Wi-Fi. So, 
Um, Frank, also, there's no guarantee that Kyrie stays, even though he opted in. But he still wants a contract. And if he doesn't get a, his contract he wants, he's he's going to leave. But apparently the Nets offered him a four-year max deal, which has incentives for games played across the first two years. So apparently they offered him a pretty good deal, at least yeah. are negotiating good faith. A fair deal. A fair deal for a guy that acts like a fucking lunatic. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Is that not a fair deal? Yeah. He only has to play a certain number of games, and he gets the full max deal. And meanwhile, he's going Wait, at it with Stephen A. Smith. He wants the full max. He wants the full max deal, and he's going to continue to do his shit, taking uh, games off and going on fucking Jamaica or or finding some excuse to like take half the season off again. He hasn't done that though. He didn't do that this year. It was it was New York City's vaccination laws, and it was they were trying to set an example with him, and they wouldn't reverse it. That's what it was, and, and he held out, and he he wound up getting his way. He didn't have to get vaccinated. Um. Well, that was that was not him disappearing. The year before was was that's what antics we saw the, in the year prior. This year it was it was a matter it, well, of, of it, state it's laws. It's always something with him. It's always something. Yeah. And uh, and Kevin Durant was basically said if he if, if Kyrie goes you had to trade did they had to, they would have had to trade Kevin Durant. Yeah, of course they would. Of course they would. He's he's in the he's old. He's aging. He's been injured. He, he doesn't want to be on a rebuilding team, and he shouldn't be. And uh, the Nets don't have the ability to rebuild. They don't have a draft pick until 2028. No, and rebuilding in the NBA is is no, it's it's impossible. basically it's basically impossible. The NBA is a fucking cesspool with all this every 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 other week. It's now hear hear me out here. As a fan, the NBA fucking sucks. I'm not a fan of the it NBA does. anymore. I'm not. I, I I grew up um, one. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm following you. I, I agree completely. I'm I'm about fed up with the NBA. As a member of the media, as a writer, as a reporter, and I'm not, I don't cover the NBA, so this doesn't affect me. But if I was, and for the people who do, the NBA is, is probably the most entertaining league to cover next to the NFL. Like, it's it, probably more so. The NBA is, is a dream for someone covering because there's always shit going on. There's always drama. There's always a disgruntled player, superstar, wanting to trade. Like, it's constant. It's constant. You're always hearing about it. It sucks as a fan, but... The end. The NBA is it, there's no loyalty, there's no commitment, there's nothing. It's just a bunch of selfish players. And, and, and you know, I stood out in front of uh, Major League Baseball headquarters protesting yeah. Rob Manfred, of course, as you remember. Oh yeah. The NBA <laughs> needs the commissioner to come in and say the shit stops. We have non-competitive teams. You, I mean, the Sacramento Kings have no hope. No hope. Is any player that goes to San gets drafted by Sacramento? It starts counting down the walls to when they can leave. The last time we saw a rebuild legitimately work, um, Philadelphia 76ers. Wrong. Warriors. Well, I guess. I guess, yeah. They did build. They technically they how built their get, team. Did, they take built, a guess how many times the Warriors have made the playoffs between uh, 1992 and 2012? Not many. One. All right, but yeah, it's actually, took, might have been, took, might have been two. Might have made it. Might have made the playoffs twice. So, but basically, it, it's, they went to a two-year stretch where they only made the playoffs once or twice. Uh, they had that one fluke run where they uh, upset the uh, with the Mavericks. And that they had the Mavericks number. The Mavericks won six games that year, one seed in the West. The Warriors were like uh, 30, 38 and 42, uh, 43, snuck in the play, 44, snuck in the playoffs and beat the uh, Mavericks. And during the season, the Mavericks lost to the wa- Warriors all, five, all four regular season meetings. It was like a fluke thing. And then the, uh, in 2010, 2011, they retired like Chris Mullins' number. And they're booing the owner, booing the general manager. They're like uh, losing 50 games for like the the eighth time in 12 years, and it was hopeless. And all of a sudden, they 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 luck out and they draft Steph Curry. He turns into something. Clay Thompson turns into something. They never had the high draft picks. They're kind of like what the Knicks were, what the Knicks are for the last for the last 20 years. Just utterly hopeless. And they finally land to find like that one stud. That nobody that most teams missed on, and 
They they got him late uh, late the late top ten eight nine seven pick where uh, where you 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 can build a team around if you get lucky and they, they got lucky and but the 76ers you, even their their rebuild isn't fully worked I mean they got Joel Embiid and he's probably going to want to leave soon uh, James Harden hasn't worked out Ben Simmons is on the Nets and he wants a hammock on the sideline next year so he can watch the games. Mavericks Mavericks have had a rebuild technically too and, and they've or at least recreated their team and it, it all comes down to either drafting a superstar or signing a superstar or multiple that's what it comes down to Knicks have been unable to draft one or lower one here like teams like that like and they keep going after players that, are, that are, aren't that good why are they going after this Brunson guy and not Donovan Mitchell who aches to be a Nick let me guess, Marlon uh, Ashley's leadoff homer? Um, no, but the game is starting, so let's uh, let's let's wrap up. And uh, you have a song request to take us out with uh, into the Mets game. Um, All right. So, do you know the song Scatman or either no. Scat? Okay. Uh, do you know the Pittsburgh Pirates team song? That's what uh, John Fallon wants. And there is one more of a. I don't even know that song. Someone someone said they want to hear you recreate a performance you had. Um, so, yeah, so we, we got the game coming on the Mets. Uh, hopefully they ease your stresses a little bit and the season isn't actually over, as everyone is saying. But, Frank, sing the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates team song to take us out. No ass to tank this week? No ass to tank. Everybody was giving song requests. All right, let's see. Uh, what do you do? Ball club, what do you do with a shitty ball club? What do you do with a shitty ball club? Name them Pittsburgh Pirates. What do you do with a shitty ball club? What do you do with a shitty ball club? What do you do with a shitty ball club? Name them Pittsburgh Pirates. All right, take like the prize to you next week. Next week, and going to fucking hell. Probably not one more time. See you next week. <laughs>